What's up guys, my name is Stefan Ash and we have some super exciting things to talk about. The two upcoming events for Final Fantasy XIV, Breaking Brick Mountains and the Moogle Treasure Trove event that start October 19th, both on the same day. So without further ado, let's jump into why you should be doing these events and not putting it off, especially if you're new. Jumping over to the Final Fantasy Lodestone, the first thing we see is the Breaking Brick Mountains event. This is a collaboration between Final Fantasy XIV and Dragon Quest X. Clicking onto the special site, it gives us a special rundown of what the event is going to entail as well as the rewards. These are golems, which are particular enemies of Dragon Quest X. I'm a huge Dragon Quest fan, so I'm super excited to get into this event because I never actually got to do it prior years. Scrolling down, we're gonna go over what the actual rewards are. The first reward you can get is the helmet. This is a reoccurring helmet that you see the NPCs wear in Dragon Quest X. Just seeing this makes me want to replay Dragon Quest X. The other thing you can get is the minion. This is the golem after you do the seasonal event. And then the last thing you can get is another headpiece, which is the slime crown. This event starts on Tuesday, October 19th at 1 a.m. and runs to Thursday, November 11th. So you have plenty of time to start this event and finish it. Most of the time, seasonal events are very quick. They're not really something that takes a lot of time. You can start this event by going to Havax Alvox. I'm really bad at pronouncing things, as most of you know now if you've been watching my videos. This NPC vendor is located in Ulda. After you talk to him, you're going to be able to start the event at different fates. They also list where the fates are going to be located. So we have Central Thanalan. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right. We also have Lower Linosia, Upper Linosia, and Central Shroud, as well as North Shroud. These fates are located in each of the starting areas, so even if you're not far enough in the game, you will be able to participate in the event. After doing those fates, you will be able to purchase the King Slime Crown by speaking with Tuffy in Ulda, Steps of Nald. And that's pretty much wraps up that event. I'm just looking forward to getting the collectibles, and kind of reliving the Dragon Quest X life. I'm probably just gonna have to replay the game now. Moving on to one of my favorite events that Final Fantasy does regularly, and that's the Moogle Treasure Trove event. This event right here, you can usually get quite a lot of awesome rewards just by multitasking and doing things that you are already gonna do. The event starts from Tuesday, October 19th until the launch of patch 6.0. So that means this is gonna be going on until just about November 23rd or around that time as long as the patch comes out on time scrolling down we see some of the amazing rewards that we are going to get i am super looking forward to this fire bomber jacket with the lodestone symbol lodestone symbol on the front of it the kaimu which i believe i already have this one you can usually get some pretty awesome mounts from these events that are related to the expansions and i'm not quite sure what this last one is i don't know if it's the full outfit or if it's just the cloak that he's wearing usually with these events you pretty much do dungeons trials, PVP, where you're gonna be able to collect irregular tombstones. Scrolling down, we'll see what is actually gonna be offered. So irregular tombstones of lore for the Praetorium. This is pretty much what a lot of people spam. A really great way to level up alt jobs by getting these tombstones and doing the Praetorium if you're above level 50, since the Praetorium daily can offer a lot of experience. We're gonna get seven tombstones for Castrum Meridium, five tombstones for Amarat, which is usually a part of the level 80 dungeon roulette. And then we're gonna get three to five tombstones for PVP, three tombstones if you lose, five tombstones if you win. We're gonna get four tombstones for the Etherical Chemical Research Facility, Belsar's Wall, Alamigo, and Gimlet Dark. Three tombstones for the Labyrinth of Ancient, Syracuse Tower, World of Darkness, the Binding Coils of Bahama, and the Binding Coils of Bahama 2. Last but not least, we're going to get two tombstones for the Delta Scape, Sigma Scape, Alpha Scape, Containment Bay, so pretty much the Omega Raids. To exchange your tombstones, you're going to have three vendors you can choose from the Moogle, which they don't leave. You've probably seen them in your main starting city. And the exchangeable items that I'm super looking forward to is this Inferno Jacket. It's going to be 100 tombstones. It's going to be equipable by everyone. So usually this is the first item that I go for whenever these events start. 
because this is the one that you can really only get during this event. They might bring it back in other ways, but you just want to pick this up for glamour purposes. There's two mounts that you can pick up that are special, which are the Auspicious Kamu, which is the dog from Stormblood Trials, or you can pick up the Dark Lanner Whistle, which is the bird from Heaven's Wards Trials. They're going to have an aesthetic for hair as well as battle orchestration and some time war maps, which I'm super excited about those. Those are probably going to give you really good item once you complete them. They have some Alamigo barding, which I love to dress up my chocobo, so I'm super excited about that. And then these mounts right here, they usually have them. Um, if you've ever done these events in the past, then you've probably picked up these mounts already. They're pretty common and just a really easy way to get them. The pro tip for these events is if you've been wanting MGP, this is your chance to get it. They have MGP platinum cards, which give you 50,000 MGP for 30 tombstones so you if you play regularly then you're probably going to get a lot of these irregular tombstones already and this is a really great way to build up your mgp and go for some of those special mounts that you've always been wanting from the gold saucer they have some house things the fat cat sofa which is super exciting and then i'm guessing this is the jacket from up top the bone wicca whispers jacket this is going to be a caster jacket which is going to give you some really cool glamour going into endwalker the last few things i want to mention is they usually have a few minions and these are just again super easy to pick up so you might as well if you're going for the gold saucer special mount which is collecting all of the cards for triple triad then you're gonna definitely want to pick up these triple triad cards this is pretty much the events that they're gonna have before Endwalker and probably the last few events they're gonna have before Endwalker. So this is just a really great way to get a few mounts, any new things that you need, as well as that awesome new Endwalker Inferno jacket that I will probably be wearing at the start of Endwalker. All in all, do not miss out on these events. They offer so much and you get so many awesome rewards. You're definitely gonna wanna put this on your list to do before Endwalk. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'd be happy to answer any for the upcoming events. I want to give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate all that you do and your continued support. If you want to connect with me on Patreon or my public Discord, then you can go into my description box down below and click on my link tree. That will have access to all things that I've included for this channel and me personally. If you want to watch more Final Fantasy tutorials, then you can click here.